here we are, December Roundtable. Uh, hopefully we've get, got some great news to share with you guys. Uh, got some interesting things going on in the districts, uh, some real progress going. Um, but first, let's uh, hear what Mr. Stephen A. Smith, our illustrious scout executive, has to say. When I was a young scout, I got up in the middle of the night and went out into the living room and several of my dad's friends were gathered there. And a man in a red suit and a fluffy white beard told me, Stephen, go back to bed. I'll be back to see you on Christmas Eve. The next day when I went to school, one of my closest friends told me about Santa Claus stopping by their house the night before. He brought gifts, ice cream, cookies. The family sang song and celebrated the holidays. Years later, I put one and one together and confirmed my suspicions with my father. He confirmed them and he said, the best part of the holidays was in giving. And that was our family tradition. We gave and continue to give. I think that's why I'm drawn to the scouting program. Scouting gives year round. And this year we've given more than ever, whether it was making masks or face shields, helping grocery shop for people that just couldn't get out of their homes, whether it was running a food drive or helping in a food drive. Scouting has reached out to help wherever it could. We serve, we give joy, and we create great citizens. I am so proud to be associated with the over 7,000 leaders of the Connecticut Rivers Council. They all serve as individual role models to each and every one of our scouts. Scouting is all about creating good citizens that give back to their community, not just in the holidays, but year round. On behalf of myself and the board of directors, I really would like to wish you, your family, the most blessed of holidays and have a great year. Be well, my friends. Thanks, Stephen. That was great to hear. Uh, and next, we've got Mr. R. David Lee, our esteemed council commissioner, who's doing a fabulous job. Uh, I'd like to thank him for all the hard work that he puts on behind the scenes. He does a great job. Mr. Lee, how are you doing? Good, Mr. Chip. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we've made it to December 2020. Who'd have thunk we'd have a year like this? While a scout is generally prepared, as we know, I'm not sure any of us were prepared for what we had this year. Um, but a scout is also resilient, and that resilience was clearly demonstrated over this last eight months by all of you in helping keep the scouting program going. Each of you worked hard to find creative ways to keep our scouts engaged and continue on their scouting journey. It certainly has been a challenge to find ways to encourage scouts to participate especially with online troop meetings following their day-long day -long online scout, uh, class activities in the spring. This time last year, we were all planning for a fun and exciting summer during 2020. Apparently that didn't happen. Um, we had to quickly shift our plans. You all pivoted quickly and uh, we found new and exciting ways to keep our scouts involved over the summer. And we had to do it all again this fall when we went back to, when scouts went back to school. So for each of you, your efforts were appreciated. And I simply want to say on behalf of the Connecticut Rivers Council, thank you. If the pandemic wasn't a challenge enough, we had to face this ongoing issue of the bankruptcy. And we by no means want to minimize anybody's experience. And we want every, each and every abuse victim to receive the help they need and any reasonable compensation to which they are entitled. The bankruptcy is addressing generally issues from our past. And the BSA presently has a well-recognized gold standard in terms of youth protection, protection policies and training. But we do face some public relations perception issues. 
The news regularly rehashes historical stories that are having an impact on our recruiting ability. We face a challenge in recruiting new families and members to our program, and in particular, the Cub Scout program, which is, as you know, the lifeline of our scouting program. The BSA program has taken several gut punches this year, but we will, we're still standing and there's still much fight to be had. Let us remember the mission of our scouting program, which is to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over the lifetimes, over their lifetimes by instilling in them the values of the scout oath and law. Given what's transpired in 2020, is there not a better program for youth today? We need each of you, those who believe in and live the scouting program to help spread the positive message of scouting. I challenge each of you to bring a new member to a pack, troop, crew, ship, or unit meeting of any type. And without youth, we have no scouting program. There will be a time in the near future when we can do the outdoors part of the scouting program safely. There will be pent up demand for exactly what scouting has to offer, the fun and safe outdoor activities that teach important life skills. We need you to be prepared when that time comes. As we close out this year, please take the time to thank your family for helping us get through this year. Please enjoy your holidays and we look forward to 2021. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. That was a really great message and uh, really uh, hits home. Uh, I'll be uh, kind of making a similar point shortly. So with that, I'd like to introduce a man who has uh, been before us once before. Uh, he's on his journey to complete the Wood Badge experience. Uh, he's working his ticket if he can. Uh, if you haven't heard about Wood Badge, uh, contact your district training chairman or chairperson, and I'm sure they'd love to sell you Wood Badge because it is an awesome program. So with that being said, uh, Mr. Mark Schneider, I hear you've got an excellent program uh, that you've put together, and I'd like you to share it with our uh, community. Thank, thank you, Chip. Um, and actually, this is my... Um, final ticket for badge. So with the completion of this presentation, I will actually be complete with my ticket with the exception of just writing everything up. So I'm glad about that. And again, Wood Badge is a great experience, as you've said, recommend it to anybody. Right, so I will share my screen now. And what this is, is a document that I wanted to put together where my vision was having something tangible to give to new Cub Scouts that they could carry along with them on a Cub Scout journey throughout the up to six years they may be a Cub Scout. And this gives them an opportunity to record the advancements and awards they get for each rank, all on one sheet of paper, and also reflect on it. Now this is by no means meant to replace any reporting out a Scout book or internet advancement or anything like that. Those obviously are still needed for record keeping and reporting. This is meant specifically you know, for the younger scouts where they have the opportunity to keep their own portfolio item for them to reflect back on everything they've done and also have something potentially that if they make it up to Eagle Scout that they would be able to display um, at their Eagle Scout Court of, Court of Honor showing their history through Cub Scouting all in one single place. Um, it is a double-sided document. It covers all ranks from Lion up to Weeblow and Arrow Light, with, um, has all current advancements and, that are required and, and electives, as well as a place to record awards, such as Outdoor Activity Award or NOVA or any of the other awards. Um, it's meant to be a graphical display that's a piece that will be appealing to the eyes, you know, of a younger child and, you know, some, you know, something that they um, carry with them as a momentum of their Cub Scouting history. So if you are interested in getting a copy of this, the only thing that you, you know, would have to change um, is the pack number on the first page, which should be an easy graph graphical fix. Obviously, feel free to change anything else you want to customize to your own needs. And if it's something you're interested in, send me an email at pack96ellington at gmail.com. P-A-C-K 96 E-L-L-I-N-G-T-O-N at gmail.com. Thank you, Chip. 
Thanks, Mark. That that's really cool. Uh, I love how you know you, you specify that it it's not to replace scout book, but you know I could see scouts having that in their in their brag book. You know, eight, nine, ten years after they join scouting uh, as a Cub Scout, putting that in their brag book and having it front and center of their of their Eagle Scout Court of Honor. I think that's a pretty cool idea. Have it all right there. So thank you very much. Uh, and with that, I'd like to introduce our Enterprise Risk Management Chair, Al Relier. Hi, I'm Al Relier, and I currently serve as the Chair of the Council's Enterprise Risk Management Committee. Over the past eight months, the committee has been consumed by the emergence and spread of the coronavirus, and what measures needed to be taken to maintain our number one priority, the safety of our scouts. We've had to make a significant number of very hard decisions regarding our camping season, the use of our camp properties, and how we might help you maintain some aspects of program to keep your scouts engaged. Never before in the history as an organization have we had to respond to a public health crisis like this. Even during the Spanish flu of 1918 and 19, the fledgling scouts in the U.S. could meet and often did do community service work, like handing out flyers in their communities. This risk is higher, though, and we need to protect the scouts and their families, as well as our scouters. Simply, we need to be more careful. Every scouter on this call needs to take great pride in how you've adapted to the challenge. While you've had to give up familiar and valued activities, You've created new opportunities for your scouts, and you've used new methods to engage them. And you've done this while living within restrictions necessary to protect them. We thank you for that. As I'm sure you're aware, at this moment, we're well into a second wave of the disease, and infection rates are even higher than we saw before. There have been more than 89,000 cases in Connecticut, and more than one in 10 of them have been under the age of 18. More than 100 Connecticut communities are characterized as red zones, meaning there is a very high risk of contact with the disease and infection. It's also that time of year when our ability to meet outdoors is far more difficult than it was earlier in the year. Unfortunately, that means we need to consider rolling back our in-person activities. The state of Connecticut generally sets the guidance for us, but we can and do restrict further because we understand better the nature of our activities and the risk. We've published a policy on indoor meetings that spells out our council's rules. That policy is always available to you on the council website. We'll revise it as conditions dictate and allow. While our intent is always to be equal to or better than the government mandate, if any local, state, or federal guideline is more restrictive, you must, of course, be in compliance. Please download and review with your leaders and committee what this document requires. If you might have a circumstance that allows us to bend the rules without sacrificing safety, Please let your DE bring that to us for consideration. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the perfect trifecta. The weather pushes us indoors, a very dangerous disease is ramping up, and we're all so very fatigued by the pandemic. I wish I could be telling you of a different reality. There will be a time though, when this is all behind us and we should be able to look back on it in true Cub Scout spirit and know that we've all done our best. Thank you for all that you do for the young men and women of your organization. And thank you for the opportunity to speak to you tonight. Please stay safe and healthy. Good night. Hey, Kevin, what do you got for us? Well, thanks, Chip. I have just a couple of quick things I wanted to run through with everybody this evening. Uh, the first one is, you may have seen this if you've logged into My.Scouting recently, uh, but they have updated how to transfer scouts. Prior to this, the only way to transfer 
somebody from one unit to another would be submitting in the old fashioned uh, a youth or adult application. Uh, now this can all be completed electronically via uh, my dot scouting. So don't worry about reading all the text on your screen. You can find this on the home page at my dot scouting as an update on there. We'll also include it in the next newsletter. But as you can see, uh, you can now complete that process. Either the parent initiates it or the leader can initiate it, and then it'll work its way through the application manager process. So pretty slick little update to my dot scouting. The other thing I wanted to talk about was recharters. Uh, so first thing is, we've seen a couple of these come in already. Uh, if you, even if you have uh, completed the approval process online uh, electronically with your chartered organization, we still need a printed copy of the annual charter agreement signed by the executive officer. So uh, please be sure at the end of the process, you still collect that paperwork uh, and submit it with your printed roster uh, and your journey to excellence form. So if you haven't done your JTE form yet, uh, please take a moment and fill that thing out. They did update the forms over the summer to accommodate some of the COVID restrictions and changes that had to be made to the, you know, your unit program. So if you could take a minute, just grab that form and fill it out. That'd be great. And finally, if you haven't started yet in the rechartering process, I understand, you know, you've probably been through it a few times, you know, uh, you know how it all works. But if you could just take a moment and sign in, please, please, please. Uh, so that we've got your contact info. We know you, you've got everything you need and you're underway. Uh, if you need another copy of your access code, just shoot me an email. You see my email address there on the screen, kmcleod at scouting.org, uh, and we can quickly get that over to you. No problem at all. So another copy of your access code, I'll hook you up. When you're ready to turn in your payment and your paperwork, there are a couple of different ways that you can do that this year. Uh, the first one is you can either get in touch with Sean Fogel or myself uh, to arrange for a pickup. Uh, so Sean, uh, you see his email up there, sean.fogel at scouting.org, or you can email me. We'll be glad to, uh, to swing by, meet you at Dunkin' Donuts or in your driveway or something, uh, socially distant, and grab that thing. Uh, you can also drop it in. We have a drop box that's just outside of the scout shop doors in our office uh, in the lobby at 60 Darlin Street in East Hartford. So if you have somebody passing this way, uh, you can throw it in an envelope, drop it right in there with your payment, and uh, Michelle will process that, and we'll get in touch with you if we have any questions. So that one's certainly an option. Or finally, you can mail it to us. So if you're not coming by East Hartford, but you want to get this thing out of your hands, you can send it to uh, Attention Recharter at 60 Darlin Street, East Hartford, 06108. So feel free to avail yourself of any of those three to get that recharter paperwork turned in. If you have questions about rechartering, uh, your first stop can be your unit commissioner. Those folks are experienced and ready to help you. Uh, if you don't know who your unit commissioner is or uh, you don't have one assigned, your district commissioner is sort of the next line there. And then finally, feel free to reach out to our, uh, us here in the office. Uh, Michelle is by far the smartest, michelle.smosley at scouting.org. Sean Fogel has an MBA, so he is clearly the second smartest, sean.fogel at scouting.org. And then I am consistently adequate, so you can always reach out to me as well, K-M-C-C-L-E-L-L -L -L at scouting.org. Back to you, Chip. So lately, I've been watching a lot of historical movies based in fact. Mostly they're in foreign languages, shot in those same countries, with subtitles and everything. I've also been reading a lot on American history, and I find it all fascinating to dislodge myself from my, or even our, current reality. COVID-19, pandemics, inoculations, elections won or stolen, lost, a nation crumbling or rebuilding. Different aspects from different people from different perspectives. This all got me to thinking about a time not so far in the past, give or take about 110 years or so. And just like in many of my foreign films, I'll set the scene. Thick fog blankets the busy, busy streets of London, England. Horse-drawn carriages mingle with cars and lorries. That's English for trucks. A man's on the sidewalk, confuses to which direction he needs to go to arrive at his destination. Q, the unknown scout. A British boy scout, dressed in pre-military garb, finds W.D. Boyce and he guides him to his destination. But when Mr. Boyce offers the scout a tip, the boy refuses it. Impressed by the boy's spirit, Boyce asked about scouting. The youth gave him directions to scout headquarters in the office of Lord Baden Powell, the famous British general who had founded the program in Great Britain. An inspired Boyce returns to the United States and with the help of Ernest Thompson Seton, William Carter Beard, 
James E. West, and others. He founded the Boy Scouts of America in 1910. Five years later, in 1915, Boyce incorporated the Lone Scouts of America. It, too, was inspired by a similar British program formed out of a concern that scouting must also be available to those living in isolated circumstances. The LSA later merged with the BSA on March 1, 1924. You see, the Lone Scouts were created to fill the gap so that every young boy could have an enriched life through the scouting program. And now every child deserves to be allowed to learn, explore, discover, and grow. Every child deserves to lead others, develop character, become a better citizen, a better person. These past ten, nine or ten months have thrown a curveball at us. We have Zoom fatigue, cabin fever, and a desire to have our normal back. It's been tough to create programs to keep our youth engaged and on track to meet the aims of scouting. But one man, a hundred years ago, knew just how valuable scouting was to boys, to men, and to family. Scouting still, still seeks to serve all youth, all adults, and all families. So when was the last time you sat on the Zoom and asked the kids themselves what they wanted to do? What they want to get out of scouting? We have technology that wasn't a dr even a dream in 1915. We've got communication devices that one man, one publisher, would have been amazed at. Look what William Boyce did with the BSA and with Lone Scouts.